and this great town in Athens, the friendly city. You have a, you have a history of standing up to special interests. I guess you just can't stop Athens and McKin McMinn County from backing justice and fairness. In 1936, a system of corruption came to power in McMinn County in the form of Paul Cantrell, the Democratic candidate for sheriff. Cantrell, who came from money and influence in nearby Etowah, was able to claim victory over his Republican opponent, mostly with the help of Edward Crump. Crump, whose nickname was Boss, reigned supreme in politics in Tennessee for the first half of the 20th century. He served two terms as a representative in the House and was the mayor of Memphis for three terms. He established a political machine that gave him great power, leading him to have the final say on who became mayor from 1915 up through the 1950s. After Cantrell's victory, fraud and corruption ran rampant. The sheriff and his deputies received a fee for every person they booked, incarcerated, and released. A voucher signed by the sheriff was all that was needed to collect their money from the courthouse. Deputies routinely boarded buses passing through and dragged innocent passengers to jail to pay their $16 and 50 cent fine for drunkenness whether they were guilty or not. Department of Justice records show investigations of electoral fraud in McMinn County in 1940, 1942, and 1944. However, nothing ever came of it. All while this is happening, about 10% of McMinn's population, which is somewhere around 3,000 men and women, went off to fight in the Second World War leaving mostly older and perhaps more timid men behind, enabling Kentrell to carry on his villainy unopposed. As the war dragged on, people began to tell each other, wait until the GIs get back, things will be different. In the summer of 1945, the veterans began returning home. By 1946, many of those who had gone to war were now home again. The sheriff and his gang of thuggish deputies began to harass the vets, but the more they arrested and beat up, the madder they became. Election time was coming soon, and the veterans had organized their own political party called the GI Nonpartisan League. The veterans had put up candidates for five offices, but interests centered on the race for sheriff between Knox Henry, who had served in the North African campaign, and Paul Cantrell. Since the 1936 election, Cantrell had gone on to be a state senator and installed Pat Mansfield as sheriff of McMinn County. Mansfield had done very nicely for himself during his term of office. His four years as sheriff had fattened his wallet by an estimated $104,000. But now, in 1946, Cantrell was running for sheriff and Mansfield for state senator. August 1st, 1946, election day found voters lined up early in the largest turnout in local history. Joining them were some 300 of Sheriff Mansfield's special deputies. Trouble started early. At about 9.30 a.m., Walter Ellis, a legally appointed GI representative at the first precinct in the courthouse, was arrested and jailed for protesting irregularities. Bill White, who had fought in the Pacific while still in his teens, had come home an ex-sergeant, sent two GIs to get a truck, and, with a few other veterans, he headed for the National Guard Armory. There, they broke down the armory doors and took all the rifles, two Thompson machine guns, and all the ammunition they could carry, loaded up in a two-ton truck, and went back to the GI headquarters and passed out 70 high-powered rifles with two bandoliers of ammo, with each one. After Cantrell's initial election, he took advantage of Crump's sanctioned corruption and ensured his own re-election in years to come by removing ballot boxes from the polling places and having them all counted by his men at the jail in Athens. Any poll workers who weren't his people were forcefully removed from their post. By nine o'clock that night, Paul Cantrell, Pat Mansfield, and State Representative George Woods, who was also a member of the Election Commission, and about 50 deputies were locked inside the jail and going through the ballot boxes. Their presence meant that a majority of the Election Commission was on hand, so the tallies could be certified and validated on the spot. More deputies were still barricaded in the courthouse, but along the streets, none were to be seen. At this time, the GIs had started slipping up the embankment directly across the street from the jail. Then the night exploded in automatic weapons fire and shotgun blasts. The veterans laid siege to the jail for hours, but Cantrell and his accomplices, secure behind the brick walls, refused to surrender. At 2.30 a.m., the dynamite arrived. Also about this time, 
Paul Cantrell and Pat Mansfield fled the scene in an ambulance. Soon after that, the first dynamite was tossed toward the jail. It landed under Bo Dunn's cruiser and the explosion flipped the vehicle over on its top, leaving its wheels spinning. More dynamite was thrown almost simultaneously. One landed on the jail's porch roof, another under Mansfield's car, and the third struck the jail wall. The explosions were tremendous. The jail's defenders came out and handed the ballot box over to the veterans. On August 4th, Pat Mansfield telegraphed his resignation as sheriff of McMahon County to Governor McCord and requested that Knox Henry fill the remainder term which would end on September 1st. Henry was appointed immediately, and the next day, State Representative George Woods returned to the county under GI protection to convene the election commission and certify the election. Knox Henry was elected sheriff by a vote of 2,175 to 1,270, bringing an end to the corruption and violence endured by the people of McMinn County. Today, Athens, Tennessee has returned to being the friendly city but serves as a reminder to those who are in power that corruption will not be tolerated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.